So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the rule of thirds and why you need to understand the rule of thirds to become a better photographer, but more importantly, how you can break the rules of third to become even more creative and take more interesting photographs. Let's get into the video. Most of you know this, but the rule of thirds, it's a composition rule that you can use to take more compelling photos. It's a guideline that places your subject in the left or right third of the photo, leaving the other part more open to, to show more of the scene. While there are other forms of uh, composition, the rule of thirds generally leads to a more pleasing and compelling photo. Most cameras have a rule of thirds a guideline that you can set up on the screen and I highly recommend you to use this if you don't have it. So what this does is really just dividing your frame into nine squares that are equally big. So you will get this guideline grid that will show up in the viewfinder when you take photos. That means the corners of the center square is the intersection line where you want to place your subject on either side of the, the center square. This will help you balance the main subject with negative space that will help you lead the viewer's eye towards the subject. But there are several of other ways that you can go about when you take photos and I will cover five here for you to, to try to explore if you don't know them. The five points I make here today are also meant to be broken. So these are also just guidelines for you to use and to think about, and when you think about it and you use them, it becomes more natural for you to also break them and use them in an even more creative way. The first thing I'm going to talk about is symmetry and balance. And this is probably really easy for most of us because I think that the human brain kind of thinks in, in a symmetrical way. It wants to have things aligned and to be symmetrical, just like our face with the two eyes and a mouth that goes the same way and a more or less even nose, etc. And yeah, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember being a kid drawing houses and you would start with a square and in the middle of the square you will place the door and on the side of the door you will have a window and another window. And this is just, yeah, really a symmetrical way of thinking. And I think it's just a natural thing for, for the human mind to do this. And many things here in life are based on symmetry. And this is also a way to, to think about shooting photography. And as I mentioned earlier, to understand this is also your way to, to break it. And just a simple way of breaking this is using a portrait as an example. Like if you take a headshot like this, it is of course symmetrical and, and dead on. But if you consider just taking a portrait of half the face, then you get a completely different kind of photo. In this way, you can show more of the scene if you have the subject on the side. Using symmetry like this is a way to make the viewer's brain have to think more about what is going on and to explore the scene to see what else is there to understand what this photo is trying to tell them. And I think this works really well with the human portraits where there is a more moody feeling to it or the character is a bit more interesting and perhaps has a bit of uh, roughness to them or has an intriguing story about their life. Another creative way is just simply by going down low or up high when you shoot photos. When I shoot street photography I really like to experiment with the point of view where I'm taking photos. I like to go down low and I like to sometimes go up high. Usually I go down low because I'm not that tall. So yeah, I guess I'm closer to the ground. But I think it's interesting sometimes to see how a photo changes if you have more of the foreground in the frame or if you have more of the sky in the frame. So when you shoot from below, of course, you bring in more of the scene and you show more of the upper part of the photo, like the sky, for instance but it can also help you to emphasize the grandioseness of the scene, like to emphasize how small a subject is in a big scene. Or if you use this in another way where you get really close to a subject, it can make your subject seem really big. And this is often used when doing product photography to make the subject seem bigger and it's also called the hero shot. Hey man, this is Montgomery here, man. 
I really think you should consider subscribing to this channel because it really helps me uh, try to take photos of like, you know, wild animals and stuff like this. So, yeah, and I know this uh, this dude Johannes man. He's from Denmark. You know, like they're real, really nice people and, and stuff like that. And he has a family and, and everything. So, he's like a general, really nice guy. And he's just here to try to make uh, you feel better and, and help you here, man. So, <laughs> consider subscribing, like I did, man. It really uh, elevated my life. Like. <laughs> I've never been more happy. It's, it's really nice. <laughs> so man, yeah, Montgomery here, he, he will go out and find some more animals like, you know, like Golden Puma, man. You would never have found a Golden Puma if you didn't know your hand, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I will see you around, boys. A third creative way or composition idea here is to use leading lines. And I think you have heard about this before, but leading lines is a compositional technique where lines created by human or nature is used to lead the viewer's eye through a scene or towards a subject. And yeah, this helps the viewer to be drawn towards what you are trying to show them or tell them. But I also think it helps you bring out the perspective of a photo, making it appear more three-dimensional. When I hear other photographers talk about leading lines, I rarely think they talk about the different kind of uh, leading lines there is. And I think I will make another video about this, but if you think about it, there are like uh, horizontal lines, vertical lines, curvy lines, uh, diagonal lines, and so on. And these can be used in different ways to, to emphasize the, the story of the photo. Another way to composite your, your photo is by filling the frame. Filling the frame is a technique of composing the image where the positive space takes up most or all of the frame. Filling the frame is the opposite of using negative space in your composition. And positive space, if you don't know what this is, is commonly the main subject of your photo. It is framed close up, so it literally fills out the whole frame. And by using this kind of technique, you are having a clear statement about what is your subject. Filling the frame can also be used where you don't have the whole of the subject in the frame, but only parts of it, like we talked about in the symmetry part of this video. This is really useful for detailed shots, but it also encourages you as a photographer to think about what you want to show in your photo and how you can show this in the best way. How can you bring forward the details or patterns of a subject and show it most pleasantly? How does the foreground or background add to the story of your photo? And what will happen if you bring it in or remove it from, from the frame? These are just some of the, the thoughts that you can think about when you're trying to, to think about positive and, and negative space. But yeah, in general, these uh, kind of uh, filter frame shots are really good for product shots or really close up headshots where you really want to show a lot of detail. I think this is really good sometimes if you are using reels or if you are having a carousel post where you can show more of the subject with both the wide shots and close up shots of some of the important parts of a building, let's say. Last one is about a negative space because we just covered the opposite and this is about filling the frame with negative space, so not the main subject of your, your photograph. Negative space photography is related to minimalistic photography. The viewer's eye may be drawn towards a certain part or area of the photo, but the negative space around the subject is really popping up in the photo, so the viewer cannot help to, to look at these parts as well. So this can emphasize the feeling of emptiness or loneliness, but it doesn't only emphasize the subject, but also the surroundings of the subject. Negative space adds drama and intrigue to a photo while pushing the viewer towards the subject. Negative space can also create emotion in a photo, making the viewer feel more calm or relaxed or even isolated. The more negative space there is in a photo, the more dramatic the, the feeling of the photo will be. So this was uh, five different ways of breaking the rule of thirds to become more creative in your photography style. I hope you could use this, at least if not, to try to explore this or try to use this more in the way you take photos or also 
the way you shoot video because these uh, rules also apply to, to video most of the time. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate if you hit that uh, thumbs up like button and also subscribe to the channel because I really need your subscription. This year is my goal to reach 1000 subscribers before New Year and I really need your help to do this. So yeah, please help me out and uh, I will see you around in another video in the future. Bye.